The video which we had seen last time was General Kaku Vessel. Uh, it was uh, in YouTube wrongly mentioned as well. Now, the midship section basically extends one fourth length of the ship forward and aft of the midships. Therefore, this is very important, basis your longitudinal strength. And uh, it'll depict your structural layout depending on the cargo with, uh, the ship is going to carry. So the cross section basically is uh, midway between your forward and aft perpendicular. And uh, that is the parallel body where your maximum structures can be seen rather than forward and aft. So a drawing showing standard cross section of the hull at or near the midship will uh, show the scantlings. Scantlings basically are uh, principal structural member sizes. So this uh, midship section is prepared according to calculated scantlings or the sizes of the structures, followed by locating the neutral axis of the midship section, which I had explained to you the neutral axis, and calculating the section modulus of midship section. Now, to obtain your midship section, first it should be equal to or more than the minimum section modulus value obtained by American formula as for the rule book, which you've done in stability. The bending stresses at the deck and the keel are calculated, and it is checked if the stress values are within your <laughs> factors of safety. So, the blue line here is a midship section of a row of a passenger ship. We don't have a passenger ship uh, in your uh, DTS, so we'll not do what passenger ship. But this is to explain what is neutral axis. So the maximum stresses will be the distance from the neutral axis. The deck will be at maximum distance from the neutral axis as well as the bottom plating and keel. So the blue line or the NA is the neutral axis. The bending stress graph is drawn with the neutral axis with the reference. The topmost and the lowermost ends of the graph will show your stress values, the deck and keel. Now we'll come to the general cargo section. So this is the preferred drawing. Try to make only this drawing, not the other drawings. You have other drawings here, uh, which are these ones. Don't try to make these ones. Just make this one, which is of DJIR. Now let me enlarge this further. So here you have this hatch opening, the upper deck, hatch combing. Then your Upper deck is this one. This is a stringer plate connected to the upper deck, and the stringer plate is attached to your shear strake. So the shear strake is this one strake, and this is a transverse. This is the deck transverse, which is uh, 300 mm deep with uh, 200 mm flange. Then you have these uh, longitudinals here. These are the longitudinals and the tripping bracket. So this is your beam knee, which is uh, counteracting your racking stress. This is the beam knee. And this is the shear strake here. This is your frame. The one which we have seen in the movie, uh, in the video was red. This is the one, this is the frame. Uh, this is your twin deck. And you have the longitudinals below twin deck also, and the tripping bracket because they have to take the load. And then you have a deck transverse, twin deck transverse. Now the shear strake is grade E, which we have done grade E because a lot of stress is there. So the steel grade is E, 210 mm to 20 mm thickness. And again, your twin deck will have beam knee here. Okay. 
this frame is going down and these projections on the frame are cargo battens so the cargo batten purpose is basically it is wooden sections which are attached to your frame <laughs> so that your steel cargo doesn't touch your bulk, your uh, frames otherwise you'll have cargo sweat because you are loaded in cold temperature or you are loaded in normal temperature going to cold temperature if the steel is cut uh, touching your frame the sweating will occur and that will damage your cargo so to avoid that the insulator is used this is cargo battens so your side frame is uh, 340 to 17.25 mm side plating or side shell is 16.5 mm thick then we have the cargo buttons here also and here the frame is connected to your bracket tank side bracket you have your lightning hole here and then is your db in your double bottom you have longitudinals inner bottom longitudinals and bottom longitudinals so inner bottom longitudinal thickness is less that is 10.5 and bottom longitudinal is 13.75 this is your here you have a duck keel though they have not shown the duck keel but you will have a duck keel in instead of center line bulkhead you will have a duck keel here a uh, center line uh, girder not center line bulkhead center line girder you will have two girders in lieu of center line girder and that will form a duck keel now here you will have a lightning hole and the manholes uh, this diagram doesn't look too good so you will have a uh, manhole here and lightning hole and this is your intercostal side girder and these are the stiffeners in the solid plate floor so this is your bottom plating and below that is your keel plate so the bottom plating is 16 mm now on the tank top you will have a ceiling plate a ceiling of uh, made of canvas or some absorbent material to absorb your sweat so it will be in the square of the hatch just below the hatch you will have this uh, ceiling not be just below this hatch so you having the ceiling only in this section it's not continuing till uh, the side it's only till here square of the hatch then on the tank side bracket you will have a bill ceiling bill ceiling again to absorb the sweat so that's your uh, diagram i'll do the explanation after this now i'll just show you another diagram which i had made
So this is the hatch combing or transverse longitudinal and stiffness here. Beam knee, shear strength, green deck transverse, green deck longitudinals, stiffness, green deck plating, beam knee here. These are your uh, cargo buttons. Cargo buttons are here. Then is your tank side bracket, lightning hole, wind ceiling. Then your DB tank. This is your tank top ceiling and uh, tank top plating here. Intercostal girder, lightning hole, manholes, and uh, bottom longitudinals, inner bottom longitudinals, and the keel plate. So that is your uh, midship section of compositely framed general cargo ship. Why it is compositely framed? Because you have longitudinal framing under deck, longitudinal framing in the DV, but on the side you have a transverse framing. That is why this is compositely framed. So this general cargo vessel is a multi-purpose vessel here, which has got derricks here, stelcon derrick, which can carry more than 100 tons. And uh, the hatches here are uh, hydraulic. I can't see manual, so they are all hydraulic, four and a half. So there you are loading bales here. Some containers can also be loaded here. And uh, deck cargo is here. So here your queen deck will be there for making another platform for cargoes. So modern dry cargo ship maximizes hold space. So typical midship size uh, vessel will have five to six holes, uh, three or four forward of the machinery space and superstructure one half. So these vessels were earlier having midship uh, accommodation. So the machinery space and superstructure usually located about three quarters up. Older versions had three holes forward of the superstructure and two up. Holes off of the accommodation, machinery space improved the trim when it was partially loaded. So small freighters often have machinery and accommodation space off of all cargo holes. Dead weight of mod, uh, modern general cargo liners are between 9,000 to 25,000 tons and a speed between 17 to 22. If you have tramps vessels, then the speed will be lower between 12 to 18. Hull depth is selected to provide your design draft and satisfy your freeboard requirements. Depth of DB is low to maximize cargo space. And your twin decks are facilitated to facilitate flexibility of cargo loading and unloading and cargo seg segregation and improve stability. So there may be watertight doors on the bulkheads, on the twin deck levels. Dense cargo is normally carried in the lower holes by light cargoes uh, on the twin deck. And refrigerated uh, spaces may be built into twin decks. So for a given trade, your whole spaces are designed for the ratio of bail cubic capacity to dead weight is 10 to 15 percent greater than overall storage factor of goods carried to allow more rapid cargo handling and broken storage. Between your cargo units, including dunnage, because of your uh, cargo buttons, you are having uh, broken storage also. So you might have uh, spaces not available for cargo storage for physical obstructions or ventilation and access requirements. So the holes are sized and provided with cargo gear to limit the amount of cargo cubic uh, stiff door gangs. Then the hatches are surrounded by combing. And the combings, uh, as we had done in your uh, load lines, so you have in position one, uh, which is 600 mm above uh, deck, position two, that is 450 mm deck. That is the minimum requirements of hatch combing. 
that will be reducing the risk of flooding during heavy seas. So the earlier vessels were had hatch covers made of wood, and nowadays you have McGregor hatches which are steel. So the main steel deck plating on hatches is not effective to provide longitudinal strength. So therefore, it is sized to carry fairly light uh, local loads. Now the deck plating outside your hatches is much heavier to exceed 5 8 inch in thickness. Now the vessel has composite framing that means longitudinal framing below deck and longitudinal framing in DB. But on the sides you have transverse frames. Now if you have direct welding of flame, uh, frames to shell plating you will have a rippling effect. That this rippling effect is going to cause cracks. That's why you scallop the frames or you have cuts in the frame. So provide the necessary degree of transfer strength. You have transfers fitted under the deck, under twin deck, in the plate flows. Now you don't have longitudinal framings on the side because that can rise to broken storage. Plus, it will require the fitting of deep transfers uh, 3.7 meters apart to restore transfer strength. That will again give more broken storage. That is the reason general cargo vessels are compositely framed. Now, in your cargo vessels, we had bill ceiling laid over the bilges and uh, tank top ceiling, which was under hatchways. So the ceiling of bilges is to be arranged with portable sections for e which can be easily removed. Wherever your tank top is extending to ship side, the bilge well is fitted of not less than 0.17 cubic capacity. That is uh, for pumping out your cargo sweat, which accumulates in the bilges. So if you don't have any ceiling fitted, then the tank plating has to be increased by 2 mm in thickness. And uh, minimum thickness of tank top plating is laid down in the rules so that your forklift trucks which operate in the hatches can be used easily there. So when the ceiling is laid in the square of the hatch, then it should be not less than 65 mm thick in case of wooden ceiling and should be laid directly on the inner bottom plating being embedded in a suitable composition or you can have battens of wood to provide clear space for drainage of at least 12.5 mm. So the cargo battens which are on the sides of the frames are to be fitted in the holes from upper part of the bilge to the underside of beam knee. So these cargo battens are providing insulation to prevent your cargo sweat. So these uh, wooden cargo battens are to be 50 mm in thickness and the distance between each batten should be not less than 230 mm. So that is your general cargo vessel. So here you are, uh, we were talking of the battens here. So the thickness is 50 mm, the distance between battens is 230 mm. And this is the tank top ceiling which will be in the square of the hatch. Either it will be a wooden thing or it will be such so that it can absorb the sweat. Similarly, you have bill ceiling on the bilges here. So any questions on uh, general cargo ship midship section and its uh, features? The features here. Sometimes the question comes the features of uh, general cargo ship. Sometimes they write cargo ship midship section will be the same thing. So features here are twin deck. You will not find in any other vessel. Twin deck is a salient feature. Shear strike is straight. You will have beam knees here under your beam here under the main deck. And then you will have beam knee here. You will have cargo battens on the frames to prevent uh, sweating that is a salient feature you will have a tank top ceiling you will have a bill ceiling uh, to prevent accumulation of water there you will have uh, this thickened the height will be given there plus here you will have bilges uh, to 
pump out and that uh, cubic uh, capacity of bilge suction area will sh should be not less than 0.17 which i've mentioned meter cube so those are the salient features of your uh, general cargo or cargo ship any other questions you have any questions you have on general cargo now april batch march batch any questions here uh, no sir theek hai so now we come to the next is bulk carrier this all you have done in your uh, second mates but second mates may you never had theory or description so in this uh, you have to write uh, the description and salient features which, whichever is asked sometimes uh, the question is just uh, draw and uh, sketch and label so you then you don't have to describe no no bulk carrier vessel you will have uh, salient features which are hopper tank top side tank hopper tank lower hopper tank then you will have uh, maybe rounded shear strike or straight shear strike can be a single hull can be double hull uh general cargo also nowadays are coming up double hull because some uh, double uh, some general cargo vessels have sunk because of shifting of pipes which has penetrated your uh, shell plating and that that is the reason they also are having your double hull now let us first uh, have the diagram here now if you see this 3d diagram we start with this diagram is a 3d tool make you understand then we'll come to the main diagram so in this uh, bulk carrier the feature here is your hopper tank here so the hopper tank is uh, first thing it is for uh, increasing your center of gravity in case you're loading very heavy cargoes like iron ore or manganese ore or those heavy cargoes or lead ores so in that case your center of gravity is lowered and the ship becomes very stiff so you have a lot of heavy violent rolling so you load water here in a hopper tank and uh, once you load water your center of gravity is raised and that will ease off your heavy rolling that's why you have these hopper tanks the second reason of hopper tank is they provide your trimming because they have the plating of the hopper tank is uh, trimming or self trimming the cargo layers so because your angle of repose is high your cargo is going to project out of the hatch so the hopper tank is going to press the cargo so that you can level it on its own without the gang Uh, so you have your lower hopper tank this tank is also known as top side tank also known as saddle tank so here you have the frames here and this is the lower hopper tank plating this is the tank top these are your center girders which will be divided into two so again you will have duct keel here this these are your intercostal girders the longitudinals here and the 
plate floors here. These are the plate floors. Now we come here. This is your corrugated bulkhead. And the corrugated bulkhead will also have shedder plate here at an angle. So the cargo is shed down. The plate here is a stool plate. So the stool plate basically is uh, sliding the cargo down for easy discharge with your grabs. So this is a stool space. This is a void space. And there is no, uh, so it is basically just for giving an edge of for easy discharge. The space is being created. You don't have anything here. That's a void space. Now we come to the main diagram. So here you have a upper hopper tank, lower hopper tank. The hatch combing here, longitudinals here along with the stiffeners here. This is the hopper tank. So this is your shell plating. This is the side frame. And your bracket basically is uh, tapered. Now the tapering is done to reduce your discontinuity stress, otherwise cracks will develop. That is the reason the top and bottom brackets are tapered. So here you have a lower hopper tank, the hopper plating. The upper hopper tank is going to do self trimming of the hatches of the cargo. The lower hopper tank will slide your cargo. This is your tank top. Instead of one center line gutter, you'll have a pipe tunnel uh, with uh, two center line gutters instead of one. And the pipe tunnel uh, breadth should not exceed three meters. So here you have a longitudinally framed DB. These are your intercostal gutters. And these are your stiffeners here. And this is an inner uh, long, inner bottom longitudinal, bottom longitudinal. So that is your drawing for your bulk carriers. Yes. Now we'll have a 3D view here. Sir, what will be the thickness of the side shell plating in the bulk carrier? Bulk carrier basically is not specified depending on uh, your class. This uh, thickness will be there. But in your diagrams, they have not specified what is the thickness. And only specify nahi kiya hai. So, jab specify nahi kiya hai, it's not given in any book. So, chhod do phir usko aur So, it's not given any of okay. your... Uh, because we are doing as per the IMO books. IMO recommended books are your DJIs and all. So here you are, uh, this is a DJI drawing. So here you don't have any thickness measurements uh, given here. Now in this section, you have a 3D view. Basically, this is your... Uh, Corrugated bulkhead with your shedder plate here and the low stool plate. This is your tank top. Uh, the two center girders which will provide you the tuck keel. Bottom longitudinals, inner bottom longitudinals. Your side frames are here. And the longitudinal inside your upper hopper tank. So this is your hopper plating here. Now, when we come to a double uh, bulk carrier, which is longitudinally framed, but with a double hull, this kind of drawings are there. So here you don't have in a double hull, normally you don't have a lower hopper tank. And your upper hopper tank is connected here. 
So here you have a pipe tunnel, pipe duct also here. You have a pipe duct also here. That space is being utilized. Here you have stringer plates. These are all stringer plates here in the double hull. The longitudinals are not inside the hull here, inside your tank uh, hold here, but inside the double hull. Similarly, your longitudinals are there inside your double bottom, but no longitudinals are there inside the hold. That's your hatch cover and the hatch combing here. So that is your uh, longitudinally framed double hull. So sometimes they ask you longitudinally framed double hull uh, bulk carrier, or they just write bulk carrier, you can draw a single hull also. So this is the screw space. This is the shutter plate, which is at an angle. This is the elevation corrugated transverse bulkhead, the shutter plate here. The cargo will slide down and then again slide down with the bulkhead stool. And this is a stool space, which is void space. And here you have your double bottom tank. Now the vessel is constructed on combined system of framing like your uh, journal cargo with longitudinal framing in the double bottom, bottom of wing tanks and on the decks and transverse framing will be on the side. Now breadth of the hatch, breadth of the hatch is about 50 to 70 percent, the breadth of the ship. Angle of the wing tank with the horizontal is uh, greater than equal to 30 degrees than the rest of the cargo. Central or asymmetrical tunnel, that is your pipe duct, or passage of piping, whenever your vertical keel is replaced by two longitudinals, girders, they'll create a tunnel or a pipe tunnel and the breadth should not exceed three meters, that is ISCS rules. So the transverse webs are fitted in wing tanks at intervals of 3.4 meters. You have side stringers fitted at one third or two third of the depth of the uh, hold. So the vessel has two longitudinal watertight bulkheads, thus giving this uh, minimum freeboard of B100, which we have already done. Additional technique is in the top DB tanks will be there for unloading by mechanical grabs because they're going to hit the plating. So thickness is required. DB structure with web spacing will be between 3.5 to or 4 meters. And the classification of heavy cargoes, heavier cargo will be in alternate holes, not in all holes. So the ships will have at least two transverse bulkhead, which is the collision bulkhead forward and aft peak. So the two bulkheads define the boundaries of engine room and in space, uh, ships with engine room amidships, there will be a bulkhead forward of engine room, which is when, when this is aft, and a ship with electrical propulsion system. Both the generator rooms and engine rooms shall be bonded by a watertight bulkhead. Now, for your definition of bulk carriers, they had a uniform, uh, unified requirement S17, S18, and S20. So that decided your minimum width of double hull will be greater than or equal to 760 mm. And then only it will be considered double hull. And the width should be enough to allow access and inspection. But if you have a hybrid bulker with some holes being single hull and others being uh, double hull, then the hybrid bulker will be considered as a single hull ship because it should have double hull in all, then it will be considered double hull. Now, as per chapter 12, solus bulk carriers require installation of water level indicators in cargo holds because of transportable moisture limit. You can't exceed that 10%. So, normally uh, the Masters, they say, okay, you load not more than 8% for keeping to margin of safety. So you'll have installation of water level indicators in cargo hold, ballast tank, and void spaces equipped with alarms for maximum level. 
Then you'll have means to drain and pump bilge water from void spaces and from ballast tanks, which have a part forward of the collision bulkhead and shall be activated by a closed space and accessible from above. Then about hopper tanks. These are uh, used for ballast or for stability when carrying certain cargoes. So these are also known as topside wing tanks or bottom hopper tanks. The hopper tank section is stiffened by heavy web. And these uh, web sections are provided by at frames having plate floors. And they are repeated every three to four frames. So the distance between the web sections are three to four frames. So that is about three to four meters. Because the frame distance in cargo area should not be less than one meter. So stiffness of the bilge and hopper plated are well to the web frame. And this web play, uh, frame is uh, further stiffened by flat bar stiffeners so that you don't have distortion. Now your ducted keel, basically why you have a ducted keel? Because earlier they didn't have a duct keel. So the duct keel was providing, uh, of transporting the weight of the ship when you're coming on dry docks. So the thickness, uh, the stresses were transmitted to the plate in dry dock. Now the space was empty, so they said, okay, because your duct keel is empty, let us have pipelines there. Because in, in case you have pipelines and holds, you are using grabs, then the pipelines can break. So designers also prefer to call duct keel as pipe tunnel. Yeah. A duct keel will transmit the weight of the ship to the keel blocks when it is dry docked. So the thickness of duct keel plate is higher than the adjacent plating by at least 5 mm. So the tank top plating, the outer bottom are held together by vertical plate called plate flow, which we have seen in the video. And you have circular perforations on the plate flow, reducing the weight called lightning holes. Oval perforations are provided for human access, for maintenance or wearing SCBA. <coughs> and then the transverse side shell plating stiffens by transverse instead of longitudinal. The side frame is connected to the hopper tank and wing tanks by brackets. So these brackets are tapered and uh, flanged to provide proper stress slow from plate to web frames. So the shear strike on the side is usually at least 3 mm more than your deck plating. And because your lot of stress concentration is there, so your uh, Grade E is required in the shear strength, <coughs> and that is about almost about 16 mm thick. So hatch combing is provided around hatch opening, and that thickness and height is uh, determined by the rules. So the height is basically position one is not less than 600 mm, position two is 450 mm. The hatch combing is supported by brackets to maintain stress flow from combing to deck plate. <clears throat> now we come to the double hull bulk carrier. Now why we have a double hull? Because uh, for the safety of cargo containment plus increased stability. The diagram we have already seen, the double hull. You have the stringer plates here, pipe duct here, the hopper tank here, upper hopper tank, lower is uh, done away with. Similarly on the other side. So space between the outer and inner hull is strengthened by transverse frames. So you have the stringers here, one, two, three, which we have seen. They decrease the span and depth of the transverse frames. 
and uh, divide your double hull space into multiple tanks. So your wing tanks at various heights are required for ballast space and the designs do not require hopper tanks. So therefore you are increasing the space for cargo containment. How the top side sloping tanks are provided to prevent your cargo shifting and for uh, trimming, cell trimming. So there we have seen your both left and right side. So intervals of every three to four frames, you have web frames provided with plate floor or solid floors. So pipe ducts are provided. Pipe ducts should not exceed three meters. So there we have this uh, bulk carrier. So let's see a video on this. Next we'll be coming with your obo or oil bulk ore. In the next class. Okay. So. So any questions on bulk carrier? Sir, no. double hull, sir, double hull bulk carriers. Me, sir, आप इसमें diagram में से ये नहीं दिखा कि जो slide, जो आपने पता है sir, वो slider, sliding के slider जो रहता है bottom में. नहीं देखो अलग-अलग ships में अलग होता है. कुछ ships में नीचे का हटा देते हैं for cargo space. कुछ में double जो आपका lower hopper tank भी रहता है. For providing easy sliding or for your uh, cargo discharge by grabs. Ah, sir. Okay. Ah, वो दोनों रह सकता है क्योंकि देखो अभी क्या है ship owner क्या कहता है यार मेरा space uh, wide space क्यों हो रहा है Why I am having void space क्योंकि वो void space से उसको फायदा तो है नहीं वो yes. कहता है भाई discharge हो रहा है grab से कोई बात नहीं कई बार क्या होता है grain जैसे load कर रहे हैं तो ग्रेन लोड कर रहे हैं तो वो सक्शन से सक्शन लगाते हैं और डिस्चार्जिंग यस है ना तो तो उसके लिए जब सक्शन लगाते हैं तो फिर उधर जब होता है तो फिर देर इफ ही डजेंट हैव टू रिक्वायर ग्रैब्स तो जब उसको ग्रैब की जरूरत ही नहीं है तो वो कहता है मेरी स्पेस जाए क्यों जाए भाई मैं उसको वहाँ हॉपर टैंक नहीं लगाऊंगा नीचे तो क्लास को बोल देता है भाई हॉपर टैंक लगाने की जरूरत नहीं है तो वो बोलता है ठीक है नहीं लगाओ यार भाई हॉपर टैंक नीचे वाला कोई स्टेबिलिटी रीजन के लिए तो है नहीं ऊपर वाला है ना हाँ सर ऊपर वाला नीचे वाला तो उसको गैप कर सकते हैं लेकिन नीचे वाला लगाने से क्या हो रहा है उसका नीचे का कार को स्पेस जा रहा है तो वो कहता है भाई मैं उसको बचाऊँ तो भाई हर तरह से वो बचाने की कोशिश करता है इसलिए ये चीज दैट रीजन और कोई क्वेश्चन क्योंकि ये तीन चार मिनट में तो कोई वीडियो दिखाएंगे नहीं आई कैन जस्ट डिस्कस फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन आप पूछ सकते हो क्या क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल
या फेब्रवरी बैच को कोई पूछना है देखे नास्क में कुछ याद आ गया क्वेश्चन तो पूछ लो दैट यू कैन आस्क है ना फेब्रवरी बैच कैन आस्क ऐसे तो सारे बैच पूछ सकते हो फेब्रवरी बैच का तो पेपर आ गया है तो पेपर इज नेक्स्ट वीक ना तैयारी करो भाई अपनी है ना तो फेब्रवरी बैच यू की छह तारीख हो गई है तो नेक्स्ट वीक यू हैव एग्जाम्स अब एग्जाम्स में देखो ये ध्यान रखना कि डायग्राम विल बी इन पेंसिल पेन वेन से डायग्राम नहीं बनाना जो 25 मार्क्स का बाकी डायग्राम बना लो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है बट पेन से प्रेफर नहीं करते हैं पेंसिल से ही बनाओ लेबल भी पेंसिल से करो नो पेंस ड्रॉ द डायग्राम इन अ सिंगल शीट डू नॉट राइट एनी अदर आंसर ऑन दैट शीट पेज बचाने की कोशिश करोगे नंबर कटेंगे 25 नंबर का क्वेश्चन मिल रहा है सो यू बेटर ड्रॉ द डायग्राम इन वन पेज एंड राइट इन द अदर पेज ठीक है तो चार क्वेश्चन आपको स्टेबिलिटी एंड चार क्वेश्चन स्टेबिलिटी के आते हैं वो क्वेश्चन विल कम शिप कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड योर लोड लाइन तो थ्री क्वेश्चन ऑन स्टेबिलिटी मैंडेटरी वन क्वेश्चन ऑन कंस्ट्रक्शन ड्रॉइंग एंड डिस्क्राइबिंग इज मैंडेटरी बाकी आप लोग पांच और क्वेश्चन आएंगे उसमें चार करने ठीक है चलो वील कॉल ऑफ ब्रेक टाइम नाउ